Right. So feet down below your knees, rubbing your hands together. And tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Hold out the arm. side. Upper part of the chest. Body. And your legs. Sitting back, really weight dropping into the chair. And the sort of stiffness, tightness, any that you feel maybe in your shoulders, your chest in particular. Just starting to drain away as you remember that feeling of what we might call letting go, just allowing your body really to take up a natural, comfortable shape. rather than feeling that you have to hold a position. And try and get that right up, not just in your shoulders and your chest, but in your face as well. We, again, we often hold an expression in our faces. So sometimes we're told in these are, you, know, you, you, you smile very gently, because when you smile, the muscles in your face relax, but also, just letting your jaw drop so there's a slight parting in, in your lips rather than holding the jaw tight. And that's quite difficult because you know, right up in the hinge of the jaw, there can be a, a lot of tightness. Just to let, let that little sort of drop in, in, in your chin take place. So it does actually take quite a while across your forehead and things like that. It's remarkably difficult to, to soften the face. Breathing just nice and calm. And then you bring your feet in. And turn in your head. Same thing when you're upright. Try and get away from the idea that you somehow have to hold a position. We've all been doing this long enough now, hopefully, to have a, a sense that when you do release that tightness and that tendency to hold yourself in a particular way, you find both the support of the chair, you feel the chair more strongly, but also perhaps more importantly, this kind of inner quality a structure, a feeling within, within, within your body, that as you drop it, sort of catches you. So hips, shoulders dropping down, but coming up the middle, almost like a column, this denser feeling that your head sits on top. And so gradually we remind ourselves and we persuade the muscles, the big muscles, the back, the neck, those ones that we often sort of Hold on, hold her bit really tightly, just to release a little bit. Quite often, what happens is you know, we focus on that and they soften, and then as soon as we shift the focus of our attention, it it, it creeps back in. More than creeps, it comes back in quite quickly sometimes.
and then hands in front of the shoulders and circling around. Going forward. Hands down to your sides, winding around. And then full circle as much as you can. Trying to leave your wrists quite soft. Get the movement as a rotation from your shoulder. You can see my elbows sort of cranking around a little bit. And back the other way. your hands, these forwards in a sweat, and push back. That lack of straining is, is quite difficult when we're trying to come back to the upright position. <clears throat> So in the old habit of pulling yourself up reasserts itself very easily. Just remind yourself, you know, use your feet, use that feeling of pulling from your hips. And then turn a little. So one of the most common images, the qualities associated with these arts is to do with water and the fluidity, the density, but also the power of water, the strength of water. But when we talk about softening, it's softening in the way that water is soft, not, it still retains that sense of what we might call connection. Turn the other way. And then going around. Using your hips, your pelvis, your, your, your pelvis just rolling around on the chair. And that'll mean that you have to use your legs a little bit as well. Go back the other way. Good. And then one foot, shout, using this other foot to sort of support yourself when you move the empty leg. And 
on the other side. And alternating. So when we go through, particularly the, the initial set of exercises, which the ones that you'll be most familiar with, try and keep in mind and, and, and work with this idea of a kind of a fluid movement, one that is soft but quite resilient. So you know, water, or maybe um, another image I sometimes give to people, the sort of feeling you get of elasticity in a balloon that's inflated, that kind of thing. Hands to your sides, rotate, so your palms are forwards and bird folds it breaks. If you're interested in pattern of breathing or have an a breathing pattern to, to kind of work with in, in this exercise. The, the most obvious one I think is an in-breath as, as you come back because you're more open there in the front of your body. So be out breath as you go forwards. You might like to try that in situ a couple of times. Try and remember when you breathe in so though your lungs are down in your belly. So you breathe in here and then breathe out going forward. Don't feel you have to keep it for a long time. And if you do want to keep it, especially if you want to keep it for a while, but you may need to adjust the speed of your movement so that your breathing remains comfortable. So don't slow down your breathing artificially. One more time. And then fisherman cast net. And then rolling the ball. All these are done with the same breathing pattern, in breath as you come back. Uh, but don't feel obliged to keep to a pattern. As, as I've always said, you know, your body knows how to breathe. And if it's saying effectively breathe differently, then go with that. And then pigeons go this way.
como and then change One more time. And then punch with both fists. Then turn your hands out. With this one, very important to use your feet as you come back. You don't want to strain in your shoulders when you're making this quite significant rotation. Don't feel any straining in your joints. And then change it. A gentle push down through feet and hips, lengthening through your back, and then releasing the pressure and the contraction. So there's a, a strong downward movement underlying the movement that you can see that you're really focused on the expansion and contraction. Just feeling that some sense of almost touching the ground. Now change into the wild goose. The same little sense of a push down. One more time. And then pass in the clouds. Unlike the previous two, this one, your weight moves forwards into your feet 
a little bit more. The feet push you back into the central position and then the hips also begin to push down, giving you that same expansive effect. One more time. And then a few rounds going back to the first of these and doing all three together with the sequence. So rooting down. Wild goose. Part in the cloud. And then back to rooting down. Do we feel as we move through the sequence that the expansion in the body gradually rises up from belly to and from belly to solar plexus, lower part of the ribs, and then starting once again in the feet and the hip, feeling the expansion in your belly and solar plexus, and then higher up the upper part of the chest and the arm. And back to the beginning. One more round. Now, dragon plucks the stars from the sky. More on each side. And then both hands together. Stand in. And and expanding and One more round. <clears throat> Remember that elastic quality, water like quality. So this time <clears throat> I'm going to start the same way, but add the turning in.
Once again, Foot forward, scooping the sea and looking at the sky. Once again, using this other foot, the one that's flat on the floor, to help support the whole of the structure. Switch over. And then do grasping the tiger deer, switch over again, let's do grasping the tiger deer. So twist your hands. One more time. Then switch. And rest for a moment, just you know, settle yourself into your posture again. A couple of slow, gentle breaths, and go back into the weight transfer exercise, rocking forwards and backwards. But we're going to go into part in the wild horse's mane. So we're going to do a very specific pattern with the weight change. This time when you come back, turn slightly to your left. So you feel your weight more in the left side of your body, the, the hip, buttock there. And then when you go forwards, turn towards the right foot. So you go take a diagonal line across and then come back. And then you're just going to shift across again, much like you do when you take the steps and turn and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side on into the opposite foot diagonally coming back 
and the cross. So this is the pattern that will guide your arms. On to the left and shift into the right, forward into your left foot, back to the right hip. And this time, just hold your hands in front of you. You feel how they move with you. This is where we sort of imagine carrying the tray of drinks or something similar. Coming back. Nice smooth feeling of movement through your arms. Over into your left, and this time, as you go forward, just let the right hand swing out a little bit. Notice that my elbow is still pretty much above the right knee. Coming back, and as you turn, notice how the hand comes over. The, the, the left hand, you hold the ball between them, you move across. Same thing on this side, as you move across, your left hand swing out, but the top hand just Presses straight down to the hip directly beneath it. I go forwards. And to begin with, <clears throat> just see if you can arrange things so that when you go forwards here, it's like you go forwards, it's almost like your, your elbow gets to a point above your knee. And as you turn, your, your arm swivels out from you know, as though you're resting your elbow on the table. Coming back. So that's a, a little bit exaggerated. And but it's, it's, it's worth doing it this way. And then eventually you'll find the elbow will move out a bit, that space between your arm and the side of your body opens out, but not too far. So try and keep that sense that there's a, a relationship between your knee and your elbow. Imagine, for instance, that you could have, I don't know, just attached by an elastic thread or something like that, an elastic band. So it's not going to go right out there. It's just going to move out a little bit from there, and then it's going to get drawn back. Part in the wild horse's mane. Do one more. And then just with your left hand, swinging out hand just above the height of your little knee and your leg. Go in the other direction. The same sort of quieter quality. Your arm will go out a little bit more, but not a great deal. It's this sort of opening and closing underneath your arm. So as you go forward, it pushes your elbow out, and then you swing around the arm, swinging out from the shoulder and elbow. And then take over with your right hand.
Go back the other way. Um, let your left hand come out as well and going into the exercise stirring the beans. One more time. And then just rest. Now, once again, just rubbing your hands together. And tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. And one shoulder. Your arm. In the side. Upper part of your chest. Belly. And your legs. Quite strong on your legs there. You've got bones through the muscles before you try and stand. Lovely. And then stand. So it's quite hard to reproduce that quality of being held while you're standing for obvious reasons, really. That's why you know, quite often I'll say, you know, use the chair, you stand in front of a wall whatever and realize that some of that is going to be habitual we we often find ourselves just habitually sort of grunting we get up we get to oh we do this and then we oh, we reach out and that and, and so, so, there can be good reason for that yeah you know, if, if you've had an injury or something like that or you know i mean i remember once talking quite a lot about posture to um, a group of people and after one woman came up and said it's all very well she said well, I've had three babies and she went like that the idea being that she'd actually you know, spent a considerable amount of her time with a child on her hip and probably other kids running around so this had become for her a kind of normal posture and you know, if we carry a, a bag over our shoulder we tend to carry it over the same shoulder and 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 so on and so forth and the, all these things Will, will will affect our posture as will if, if you've had you had a bad back or something like that even if the bad back isn't there anymore you might still carry some of the habits of trying to move with that bad back or so well, and of course if you do have kind of you know, a bad back still then obviously that's going to be going to be an issue so it's hard to replace that that habit which is why i like to point out to people that we've got this potential strength within the body to hold us up because you can't just not strain if you if, if subconsciously you think you're going to fall over so starting with this little rocking movement
Um, you know, we know that this helps us to find a central point, a central sort of alignment with, with, with the pull of gravity. We know that we can identify how far we can move without straining, but also that, that fluid-like quality will be affected by the alignment, as will the feeling of being supported. And just see if you can make that distinction. So it can be a good idea to hold on to the chair, to, be, to, to, to work out what I'm talking about. You have to be able to feel it. Um, and it's very hard to, it's not impossible to, to describe. So you go forwards and you think, okay, so what's that like? Then you go forwards a bit more and you think, ah, oh, suddenly it, you, you, you lose that sense of being supported. Things change. Um, and that's why I want to hold on to the chair if you're doing that, obviously. You could, you know, um, and, and along with that goes, goes, this, goes the, the stiffening and the tightening and possibly a tendency to be pulled forwards or, or, or backwards. Once you know what you're looking for, it's going to be easier to attain. So settling down, ideally with your weight just behind the ball of each foot, let your hips sink back and then back a little bit more and sinking down and push it up. As you do this, hold your hands, I come a bit closer so you can see. So my fingers are separate and they're slightly curved. And the fingers, it's a very gentle curve. It's not curved right over like that. It's a very smooth little curve through the hand and the fingers. And what I want you to imagine is that as you go down, you're pushing your fingers into soft mud. And then as you come up, you're pulling them out of the mud or something similar. I can't, I can only really think of mud as an example, but I'm sure there's other things. So the, there's that little bit of resistance to the arms and the hands and the fingers going up and down. And there's always that image can help to create the connections that you want to work with in the body. But then bringing your hands around as though you're cradling the ball and pushing up. and pressing down. And pushing up. And pressing down. And change into the wild goose and see if you can keep that feeling. One image I sometimes use for this is that if you imagine waving a feather up and down, sort of like flat side of resisting the air, how the, the, the feather will just give a little bit. And that's another interesting image of the sort of quality of movement that we look for, particularly in, in, in the arm. One more time. And then change in.
once more. And shake. One foot forward, transferring your weight. And the emphasis in this exercise, certainly to start off with, is always on getting that correct percentage of the weight forward. So 60% in the front foot, 70% in the back foot, and allowing the alignment and um, the, the, the sinking down the time to, to just happen. But you know, to start off with the upper body said to just sit on the hips, it's a nonsense of course. I mean, there is no such thing as an upper and lower body. So again, if you imagine a resistance moving into water or even in a high wind, because if you did nothing at all, made no change with, with the upper body, the resistance of the water or the wind would hold you back, hold your shoulders back, and you'd end up leaning backwards and, um, and, and so on and so forth. So there have to be some changes, some adjustment. I can't even describe what they are. They're very subtle. But if you use the image, then you'll encourage those to build so that this the line that we use to divide between upper and lower body, which again is a, is a point, it's convenient, but it's, it doesn't exist actually, doesn't become a weak point. It's a kind of hinge point, but it doesn't, it, we don't somehow lose the strength of the legs at this point or whatever. There are muscles, both front and back and sides, that, that, that cross over that line. And go from the sort of small of your back to the knee and so on and so forth. And so we want to again gradually develop the image to develop the movement. Raising your toes and your heels. Stepping in. Make sure you step wide enough. So you see when my foot goes out, it sort of describes a semicircle. Same thing going back. So for a moment, your leg is just swinging from your hip. Let me just, I, I may have done this with you, but let me just reinforce that a, a, a little. This is a, a high density foam pad, but you, know, you might want to do this on a stair or if you've got a patio with a, with a raised surface or something like that. You stand, you stand with one leg hanging over and you support yourself. So you want to be next to a wall or something like that. This isn't quite high enough for me, but you can actually get the leg to swing. Um, I'm, I'm not quite high enough. My toes keep hitting the, the ground. So ideally a bit higher than this. And just so you can get that sense of the weight of your leg. Um, it's a nice exercise in its own right, actually. It's, it's, it's a good exercise for loosening the hip. But what it means is when we go to take that step, essentially what we're doing is we're just raising the foot and feeling, oops, feeling still the weight of the leg there going through and back. It's quite a nice feeling on, on the hip when you can get it, it's quite tricky. So try that on the other side. First of all, just transferring your weight. But if you sometimes feel that your hips are a bit kind of stuck, that exercise is a good one. You need, as I say, a bit of space underneath your foot, and you can just let the foot swing or go around in circles or whatever. 
gravity would do the work of kind of pulling on your leg and, and opening up your hip joint and lower back a little bit. But you know, obviously make sure you're, you're safe, that you're supported. And then raising your toes and your heel. Raise your toes, and then just straighten up your foot. Raise up a little bit here. Step in. Here, you just flex the foot, and that should be enough to get the toes off the ground. So while it's moving, the leg is more akin to a third arm than it is to the supporting leg. Obviously the supporting leg is supporting you, you're doing the hard work. Whereas now, whichever leg is doing the moving can actually just swing. Quite, again, it's a nice feeling in the hip and lower back. And then just take a few steps. And go the other way. Okay, go back to your chairs. Because um, um, let me just um, talk a little bit more about that movement with with, with the foot. I'm, I'm going to use the chair for support, but you can. So this is something that you can try 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 yourselves. If my weight is forwards here, and I just raise the back heel, can you see the knees coming forwards? This is all all a bit exaggerated. Actually, to to get my foot off the ground now, all I actually have to do is this flex the foot, and then it will swing through. A bit more difficult, less obvious going back. I, I raise the toes, I let the hip drop, the knees just a little bit bent. And then what I do is I just, again, extend the foot to raise the heel up. Both of those will work when you take a, the correct length of step. If you take an a very long step, obviously you're going to start angling your, 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 your body. This is an important part of the, the, the stepping mechanism, I feel, that too often we, we, we find ourselves, again, grunting and groaning to, to step. And that can be particularly true. If you've got a bit of arthritis in the knee or a hip and it's painful, then you, 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 you would tend to do that. Or if you had an injury once there, maybe a twisted ankle or something like that, that, that the same thing. And so what, what we get is this habit of sort of jerking the body to, to, to raise the, 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 the leg. As I've said before, normal walking, you might angle the body to give you the momentum, that's fine. But what you don't want to do is constantly sort of like throw the body offline to, to just, just you know, to, to, if every time you want to go up on the pavement, you have to sort of do this, then this is a very precarious position. So this exercise of just you know, supporting yourself so that you can do this and then this, and then maybe you know, if, you, if you can raise yourself up a bit, have a bit of space underneath your leg, this kind of thing. Um, you find it quite strong on, on the legs taking the, the, the step like that. So don't do too many at once. And gradually build it up as we would normally do in Tai Chi. So 
I'm sorry I didn't get around to doing any of the arm movements with, with, with stepping, but I don't, that's, that's quite an interesting point. So again, it's about losing some of those habits of, of, of movement that we've developed for all sorts of reasons. Um, and, you know, kind of like, in many ways, they're quite positive habits. If you, did, if you do have a little bit of arthritis in your knee, it could be that the way you're moving is, is the best way you could come up with so far to actually keep moving and that's and that's important so don't don't disregard them as bad habits and strain not 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 to do them but try and just move them into a more productive area i suppose you could say so let your hands drop down and then embrace tiger return to mountain i did some time ago now put a, a video up on youtube of that's that that stepping process so um i think that's still available out up there somewhere but for now, it's coming back to that quieter space. And it's actually in that space, I think, that we step back from our habitual ways of doing things. So this, this works for both body and mind. One more time. And rest. Lovely. Right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.